Hey, I'm Adam Scully. I'm 29 years old. I have Crohn's disease, and this is my story. Oh, I was initially diagnosed with Crohn's disease in January of 2010. So to make a long story short, uh, I'm 29 years old now, but back in my uh, early teens and teenage years, I was a hockey player. I see the jersey on the back there. Uh, drafted by the Erie Otters, the Ontario Hockey League back in May of 2008. Um, as we record this, actually almost 13 years to the day now, which is kind of funny to think. But um, so I was there very briefly and uh, I had some injury issues. I had a, a concussion and this was in the day and age before uh, for hockey talk where concussion, you didn't really talk about concussions as much. It was sort of, it was old school where you just go out and keep playing. And, and from this, I had a, I had a bad concussion and, and I had some weird side effects afterwards, sort of post -con post concussion syndrome. And from this, my love for the game sort of went away and I was burnt out, uh, as a 17 year old at the time. And in August of 2009, I stopped my hockey career. And this relates directly to Crohn's because as I was contemplating my decision to stop playing hockey, I was having a lot of stomach issues. Uh, I always had a nervous stomach from when I played hockey. Uh, it was always part of my pregame routine. Um, and I thought that was just nervous stomach. That was just, I cared. I, I, I was nervous. I wanted to play well. So my, my stomach wasn't great. And the, the issues progressively got worse and worse, even after I returned home from Erie in August of 2009, now heading into my grade 12 year, which is stressful enough trying to find post-secondary. And that's when I, I was initially diagnosed with salmonella poisoning. And from there, it sort of progressed where the symptoms never really went away. And I remember in January of 2010, before the initial diagnosis, I would write an exam in grade 12 in the morning and go home and essentially be in the fetal position for the rest of the day because I had a, a stabbing pain in my gut. And we thought, what is this? Now, my, my sister, Sarah, who's two years older than me and significantly tougher than me, I should say as well. Uh, she has ulcerative colitis and she's been in remission, knock on wood, for the last seven years, I believe. So I, I've seen her suffer and th the symptoms were quite similar. So we had kind of a feeling. And then and when I had the um, colonoscopy, that's when we knew, when my doctor, Dr. Steinhardt knew that it was Crohn's disease. And um, that's how I was initially diagnosed. That's January of 2010. And we're in what May of 2021 now. So it's 11 plus years down the road. There have certainly been struggles. There have certainly been moments where my health hasn't been great, but I've been fortunate now again, knock on wood that I've been on a treatment called Remicade for the last nine plus years now. And that has changed my life. And that has allowed me to become a regular young adult. That was, that was always the goal, you know, being diagnosed in grade 12 is not the easiest thing in the world because you're, you're talking about a condition where you go to the bathroom. And I remember, you know, in grade 12, and even when my condition wasn't great as well, or when I wasn't doing so well in first and second year of post-secondary, when you know, I was, I was being a young teenager and, and socializing. I, I always knew wherever we were going, where the closest washroom was. Friends always knew that sometimes, hey, I, I got to go home early. I, I'm not feeling it. So uh, I'm fortunate now, uh, again, knock on wood, that the treatment I'm on has allowed me to become a quote unquote regular person where before I would go to sleep not knowing whether I'd be okay the next morning, not knowing whether I could go to school, not knowing whether I could go to work when I eventually was hired at TSN. Um, so I'm, I'm very fortunate to, to be where I am right now. The major challenges of Crohn's disease, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis is that some things are taken away from you. Uh, for me personally, it was fruit and things with seeds. I, I love a good strawberry. I love a good raspberry, but those things were, you know, immediately cut out of my diet because I, I just couldn't digest them. You know, uh, another thing to do with food, milk, a dairy, lactose-free milk, some sort of cheese. I know some people 
have to eliminate those from their diet for sure. Uh, those are, you know, the elimination diet sort of thing. That's one of the major uh, challenges with Crohn's and uh, inflammatory bowel disease. Another one is, is the mental health aspect and how IBD and mental health directly correlate because this is, uh, this is something that not a lot of people like to talk about, and rightfully so, because this is a disease that may cause you to have some incredibly uncomfortable pain, uncomfortable moments, and where you have to spend time in the bathroom. And a lot of people don't like talking about that, and nor should they, because sometimes it, it can get you know pretty ugly and with, with a lot of pain. Uh, and, and that's where the mental health aspect sort of correlates together in the sense that if, if someone's quote unquote down in the dumps because they're they're not feeling well uh mentally they're they're not there they can't go to work that's where your your mental health isn't, isn't going to be great so i mean for me personally as pe people who know me very well know that I, I i'm always a glass half full kind of guy and and um when times were tough i would always do my best anyway to find a way to keep my head up because you're not going to feel great every day of the world, but you've got to do the best of with what you got that day. So uh, those are two of the, the major um, challenges with uh, inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, one of the, I guess, the, the pros that have come out of this is, is it relates to what I do for a living. And that's as a producer and a commentator at TSN. And I'm clearly pretty comfortable speaking in front of any microphone and in, in front of any audience. So I'm trying to use my platform and who I am to help someone who might not be as comfortable, who might be having a bad stretch of IBD who might be struggling and doesn't want to speak out. That's where I'm more, I'm more than happy to, um, to use my voice and help those who aren't doing as well, because, you know, it's, yeah, like, like I mentioned, some days aren't going to be great, but you've got to do the best with what you've gotten. And, and I, I, I guess that's one of the, well, that's one of the pros. Um, and I, I guess another pro and maybe more of an, more of a kind of lighthearted sense is you, you do have to be very disciplined uh, with your diet, especially, you know, maybe in the early goings, but how it's helped me um, in terms of diet is I, I actually, on a personal note, um, started doing uh, intermittent fasting about almost three years ago now not really having anything to do with Crohn's disease. It was just sort of, uh, you know, trying to get a little, a little fitter, try to put on a little more muscle, lose a little more fat. And since I have done intermittent fasting, I have had, I believe one bad flare day, as I call it, where I'm sort of down and out. And that happened, I think two years ago now, where I'm just sort of feeling blah and, you know, sort of sleep it off and I'm fine the next day. Uh, and, when, and when I spoke to my doctor, Dr. Steinhardt about intermittent fasting, he was Kind of, it was an eye-opening thing for him. So um, for those out there as well, intermittent fasting, it's not easy. It's an adjustment, but I'd certainly give it a go. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it means everything to me, really. Um, it's, you know, as we all know, there is no cure to Crohn's disease, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, and every dollar that we raise will go towards trying to find a cure one day. You know, as I sit here, I'm 29 years old. If there's a cure in my lifetime, that would be awesome. But down the road, if, if I am to ever have a child, the chances of, of them having this disease are, is obviously a little higher. So hopefully it's something where you know, in, in future little scullies down, down the road that there's some sort of cure available uh, then. Um, on a personal note, my sister Sarah and I, this is our 17th year uh, raising money for the Gutsy Walk. I'm very proud to say as well that we have raised over $295,000 in the 16 plus years. Now 17th year we're doing this. Uh, the road to 300K, as I've said, we're so fortunate and so lucky to have so many friends and so many generous family members who have helped us out down the road because they want to see us get healthy and we want to see, you know, the community 
of everyone who has this disease to, you know, get back on the right foot and hopefully at some point help any way we can in finding a cure. So in the now 17th year that we've been doing uh, this gutsy walk, obviously, you know, in the virtual world now with COVID, it is a little different. But in the first years of doing this, and first 15 years of doing this, it was that day, you know, that first Sunday in June, walking, it was it was awesome to see all of the little teams and communities and gangs all get together. Uh, my sister and I, uh, I'm Adam, she's Sarah, so we're team ass. And we had shirts made, or we've had shirts made. And we had one year, we had 30 people walk with us. Uh, last time around in 2019, we had, there were children, there were dogs. We, we had a whole, uh, it was at least, I think it was 42 people, I want to say back then. But it's awesome to see, you know, not only Team Ass representing, but all these other teams that are, you know, showing up and, and getting creative and, and, and trying to, you know, make it a little lighthearted at times. Because, you know, like, like I mentioned, some days this disease sucks. It's not great. It's something you don't want to talk about. Uh, it's, it's not the most fun thing in the world, but you know, it's great to see everyone sort of come together in this sort of way. Hopefully at some point we're back walking this in 3d and we get to, you know, see everyone walk around, walk the five kilometers and, and, uh, enjoy the sunshine and, and together help find a cure for IBD. Together as one, we walk to stop Crohn's and colitis.